He was known as the baddest man on the planet, the two-fisted phenomenon whose exploits engaged an audience right up until his final fight. Across a 20-year career, Mike Tyson became must-watch TV for a generation of sports fans. From the explosive early knockouts, to the contentious ring crimes, to a more mellow, philosophical character post-retirement. Tyson's name is synonymous Match with boxing. Me. My style is impetuous, my defense is impregnable, and I'm just ferocious. I want your heart, I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. As his life and career evolved, Tyson became a divisive figure whose very presence courted controversy. While he may not have possessed the dazzling flair of Muhammad Ali or the longevity of Joe Lewis, a prime Tyson holds his own in any heavyweight conversation not just for his underrated skills, but for his breathtaking one-punch finishes. 23-pound weight oh, advantage, goodness, and he put it all there. The right to the head, and it's all over. Tyson's unpredictable nature made for box office TV. Opponents were intimidated before they even made it into the ring. Only the biggest and the best stood up to his assaults. From the 1980s to the mid-2000s, his ferocious punching power and wide appeal still remained intact. Get off oh, oh, a beautiful right ring. Right Down goes Pova. It's over. Mike Tyson has returned. After 15 years since his last professional bout, we rewind the clock and take a look back at the rise and fall of boxing legend, Iron Mike Tyson. After dismissing all of his first eight opponents inside the distance, Mike Tyson faced off against confident Ohio native Donnie Long. What a good, clean, hard fight. Both his touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. The master of disaster had a solid winning record and tried to implement a stiff jab to deter the marauding Tyson from coming inside. Long needed so much more to halt the Tyson train. Tyson again, another one of those fresh youngsters, only 19 years of age. Long is 27. Oh, wow. A fiery left hook had him down in the first and wobbling around in the corner trying to regain his senses. Mike leapt on his man, dropped him twice more, the third and final time from his potent left hook. With a strong right hand barrage again. This is as bad as I've ever seen Donnie Long look, but and give Tyson credit, that's it. it. Wow. The left hand puts him down. He collapses and this one is over as the doctors rush into the ring. Just 16 days after Donnie Long had received the Tyson treatment, another sacrificial lamb was served up for the teenage heavyweight prospect in Atlantic Ladies City. And gentlemen, let's welcome aboard Big Bob Colain. Colain's upright stance left an inviting head target, and Tyson wasted little time smashing him away with the left hook. Left hook, good night. What a great shot. It lasted just 37 seconds and emphasized the point that this was a fighter on the rise. Well, that has got to be one of the quickest. They keep wheeling him out. He keeps knocking him over. Marvis Frazier might have been a heavyweight boxer just like his legendary father, Smokin' Joe, but that was where the similarities ended. Frazier tried to bob and weave, sliding across the ropes in a Philly shell. But Tyson had his head rocking in the opener, and Marvis took account from referee Joe Cortez. Uppercut, and Marvis is hurt. Frazier is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look, and he's going to stop the fight. Showing no inclination to rise and continue, Frazier was counted out after just 30 seconds, registering as the fastest KO of Tyson's career. The biggest opportunity of Tyson's career thus far saw the Brooklyn man challenge the WBC heavyweight champion, Trevor Burbick. Trevor Burbick! Heavy-handed Burbick had been the final opponent to face Muhammad Ali. Tyson dismissed the champion pre-fight and immediately set about him in the ring. And Burbick ready to go, but he stays on his feet. Another right hand clips him. He can't take shots like this very long. Wow, what a right hand is Mike. Again, he's won. Catches him with foot. Trevor's ready to go again. Hurting the Jamaican at the end of the first round, Tyson had him down in the second from a flurry of powerful lefts and rights. What could have hoped for in that round? Trevor Burbick 
Butler should point out has been down twice. There's another big shot by Tyson. Burbick in a heap of trouble. Down he goes. Burbick was unsteady on his feet following a second knockdown, and Mills Lane called a halt, crowning Tyson as the youngest heavyweight champion in history. That was a right to the body and an uppercut He's to the head, and Burbick is down. This one is going to be over, I believe. It's over. That's all. And we have a new era in boxing. There is no praise high enough for Mike Tyson for fulfilling all of boxing's hopes for what he's done here. Amen. Fresh from a points win over IBF champion Tony Tucker that saw him unify the belts, Tyson was busy defending his silverware against unbeaten Tyrell Biggs. Tyrell Biggs! The taller challenger floated around the ring, jabbing from waist height. Mike responded by working behind his own rangefinder, and in round seven, Tyson found a home for his lauded left hook. Oh, that, that was a tremendous left hand. Biggs made it back up, but another left hook soon ended his evening. He is gone right now. He has no legs at all. And 10 seconds to go in a round. There's a left hand. He's down again. It's over. It's all over. And it wasn't even close. Tyson was at the pinnacle, an undisputed champion hammering opponents to defeat making successful defenses of his belt. He was in every sense the man to beat. For so long, the main man at heavyweight himself, by the time Larry Holmes fought Mike Tyson, he had been through the mill mentally and emotionally in back-to-back -back losses to Michael Spinks when he was on the verge of making Larry history. Holmes! The Eastern Assassin boasted one of the best jabs of all time, but Tyson put it on him from the start, backing up the safety first Holmes before Mike uncorked a cracking left hand in round four that landed Holmes on his back. That round after round. Oh, a big right hand, and down goes a former champion. He was there right in the button. Larry got up, but was dropped twice more, the second from a heavy right hand. He should be hanging on. Now with the right hand, the left hand. He's going to hang on, and he'll stop the fight. Down he goes. Now he's hurt. It's all over. He is knocked out. A big right hand ends the career of the former champion of the world. Considered by many as the ultimate peak moment of Tyson's career, the one-round knockout of lineal champion Michael Spinks enabled Mike to mop up in the division and become the top dog with no argument. Michael Spinks has to keep moving because every shot... Oh, the cut landed inside and Spinks went down. Floored twice within seconds, the final right uppercut left Spinks lying on his back, a visual representation of all 35 of Tyson's victims. Things could hardly get any better for the baddest man on the planet. And that is the first time Michael Spinks has ever been down in a professional fight. And he's down again and in serious trouble. A right hand He's not going to make it. It's all over. Now we know why Butch Lewis wasn't anxious for Michael Spinks to fight Mike Tyson in the unification series. What happened in that round was that Mike Spinks got hit and his natural instinct as a champion and as a winner was to try to fight back instead of covering up. And because he wanted to fight back, he got knocked out. After wiping away challengers Frank Bruno and Carl The Truth Williams, Tyson returned to Japan to defend his status as top dog. A talented yet inconsistent opponent, challenger James Buster Douglas, was expected to be blasted aside so that Mike could box Evander right. Holyfield. The dressing room explosion. Shake hands and good luck, both. Motivated by the recent death of his mother, Douglas had other ideas and boxed with accuracy and discipline. The weak kid, and that's what Another happened. good right hand and a good right uppercut and two more good rights. 
by Douglas. I don't think I've ever seen Tyson absorb that kind of a four or five punch combination before in his professional career. Even an eighth round knockdown could not deter Douglas, who kept the pressure on Tyson right up to the stunning 10th round finish. It was one of the greatest sporting upsets of all time. Just to try to get in the shot that will finish things in Oh, the uppercut. What an uppercut by Douglas. And down goes Tyson. It's over. It's over. Mike Tyson has been knocked out. Unbelievable. Let's go ahead and call it the biggest upset in the history of heavyweight championship fights. Say it now, gentlemen. James Buster Douglas, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Back in the ring after serving a portion of a six-year prison sentence, Mike Tyson was eager to show that rather than heading into permanent decline, he was still a heavyweight force. Any questions from Mr. Tyson's corner? Let's get it on! The world watched with a lurid fascination as Tyson returned to center stage against Peter McNeely, a charismatic boxer with a heavy punch but limited skills at the top level. A few months and here we go! And McNeely, as advertised, comes right at Mike Tyson. Down goes McNeely. Seconds into the first round. McNeely rushed at Tyson, and the pair traded blows. Even a ring rusty version of the former champion was too strong and fast for his opponent, winning in the first round. Mills Lane had stopped that nonsense because they were starting to butt heads. Oh. Tyson with a left hook, a right hook, and down goes McNeely again. McNeely's hurt this time, Steve. He's very he can barely stand up. In this fight, he's got about 30 seconds left. He's... They want Tyson to go to the neutral corner. That's it. it. He quit. Right McNeely up. has quit. He didn't over. quit. His corner threw in the towel. He didn't quit at all. McNeely didn't quit at all. His corner didn't quit. quit at all. He pulled his heart out. This is tantamount to, to Evil Knievel jumping over the counter in, in a rocket. He didn't even get started. That's a crime for McNeely. This kid was fighting his heart out. That is, that is wrong. Following years of near misses, in November 1996, Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield finally met in the ring. My commands at all times. you have any questions? Touch gloves, let's go. A former undisputed cruiserweight champion who had since made a name for himself as the ultimate heavyweight warrior, Holyfield stood up to Tyson's early barrages and matched him punch for punch. Holyfield dropped Tyson in round six, cut him with a headbutt, and started to take over with long-range boxing and rugged inside work. Six. Holyfield's closing his round like a champion, like the overachieving warrior oh, that he is. Oh, there goes Tyson, a badly fading Tyson took increasing punishment until referee Mitch Halpern intervened in round 11 as Iron Mike sagged under the strain. In 1997, Tyson went back in with his nemesis, three-time heavyweight champion Evander Real Deal Holyfield, determined to avenge his previous stoppage loss. First fight is almost palpable. Here we go, fight two, round one. Holyfield picked up where he left off in the first fight, matching Tyson in close or at range, throwing in his head for good measure. Around the right eye of Mike Tyson from a clash of heads, I believe. That's just what happened, and Mike said, what about this fighting, what about this head? Just as in the first fight, Tyson was cut and quickly grew frustrated with Holyfield's roughhouse tactics and wayward stall. What happened here? He got bit, I think. Evander Holyfield, look out, he's pushed right here, above us by Tyson. He's got bit in the ear. This prompted Mike to pull off one of the most infamous moments in boxing history when, in round three, he bit off a chunk of Holyfield's ear. An inevitable disqualification and suspension followed. He battled Holyfield for the second time, and it is all out of four. I saw that one. That was right clear. It's a miracle he didn't get bit back. 
I'll tell you what, this is unbelievable. Bills Lane signaling that it's over. I think they've just about had enough. Tyson showing desperation in fighting Holyfield two times. Mike Tyson resorting to fighting tactics, and he still wants more as he's being held back by Richie Giacchetti. Just an awful display here by Tyson. Five years after the Holyfield debacle, having worked his way through a string of contenders and pretenders, Tyson squared off with another generational rival in the form of Lennox Lewis. Lewis was the consensus number one in the division. Showing tenacity when causing a riot at the pre-fight press conference, Mike still held on to the promise that for one night, he could revert to the Tyson of old. When a guy keeps leaning on you, whoa! Music by Tyson. Tyson comes up with there's a safety a, left hook. And, there, there's and, and, and there's a cut on the right eye of Tyson, it appears. A vibrant opening round aside, he was for the most part kept on the end of Lewis's ramrod jab before being knocked out by a right hand in round eight. Oh, he's doing a good job. He's got heart. Yeah, he's you can't take that from him. Big right hand from Lewis, and Tyson goes down for the third time in his career. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's over. Lennox Lewis cements his legacy as one of the best heavyweight champions of this era. Nobody should be able, there's no one in the world can take that from Lennox Lewis now. He is no doubt the best heavyweight of all time. What he's done clearly puts him on top of the heat. The final chapter of Mike Tyson's career came on June 11, 2005, as he lost to Ireland's Kevin McBride. Remember guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch him up. Closing in on his 40th year, Tyson struggled to cut the distance and time his bombs. When he does throw, and that's part of the defensive liabilities we've seen from Tyson. There's a low blow by Tyson. Mike wailed away, hopefully, against a tall, strong opponent, who realistically would have been blown away early by a prime version of the ex-champion. 15 seconds left of the sixth round. And if McBride actually wins this round, it would be a 10-7 round. After a six-round grapple, Tyson slid to the ropes under the weight of McBride's bulk and retired on his stool soon after. It was a meek ending for such an explosive individual. Mike, first, let's start with you. Did you want to continue? Well, I would like to have continued, but I saw that I was getting beat on. I realized I don't think I have it anymore because I'm, I'm, I'm just fighting to take care of my, um, my bills, basically. Does that mean we won't see you fight again? Yeah, most likely I'm not going to fight again. I'm not going to disrespect the sport anymore by losing to this caliber of fighters.